Okay, so we're going to solve this problem where we need to find the turning points of this function. You can see here in the numerator and denominator we've got the modulus function. So this is saying that in the numerator where we've got the modulus of x, this is going to be equal to, if we put a positive number in, we just get the same number. So this is just equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0. But if we were to put in a negative number, let's say we put in negative 3, we would get positive 3 as the output. So we change the sign of our number if x is less than or equal to 0. And similarly here in the denominator, we've got the modulus of x minus 2. So we can write this as the modulus of x minus 2 is just equal to, if x minus 2 is positive, it's just going to be x minus 2, nothing changes. So for x minus 2 to be positive, we just need x to be greater than or equal to 2. And then we get the negative of this, so negative x plus 2 if x is less than or equal to 2. You can see here when it's actually equal to 2, both of these just give us 0, and similarly here we get 0 when x is 0. So now we can split up, depending on the size of x, this function, we can now get three different cases. So in the first case, if x is less than or equal to 0, then we're going to have the modulus of x is going to be negative. We can see this one here, we're less than or equal to 2. So we're going to have when x is less than or equal to 0, We've got y is equal to negative x take away 1 over, and then in the denominator we've got x squared minus x plus 2, because both of these are in the negative case. So that's where x is less than or equal to 0. And then we get something else when we're between 0 and 2. So if x is between 0 and 2, we're now greater than or equal to 0, so the numerator becomes x minus 1 rather than negative x minus 1 but then the denominator doesn't actually change. We'll still write y equals here, and the denominator doesn't change. We've still got x squared minus x plus 2, because x is less than or equal to 2, so the modulus in the denominator is negative x plus 2. And then finally, for x greater than or equal to 2, we're going to get now the numerator is still going to be x minus 1, because x greater than or equal to 2 implies that it's greater than or equal to 0, and the denominator now becomes x squared plus x minus 2, because the x minus 2 and the modulus of x are both positive now for x greater than or equal to 2. So now if we look at this third case here, you can see we've got x squared plus x minus 2, which will actually factorise quite nicely. So we get a factor of x minus 1 times x plus 2. And then you can see there's some cancellation here. The x minus 1 in the numerator and denominator cancel, and we just get 1 over x plus 2. But unfortunately, there isn't a nice factorization for either of those, and no cancellation there. But in this third case now, we can see what y is, and then if we want to try and find turning points, we could set dy dx equal to 0, find where the gradient is 0. So if we want to differentiate this, we get dy dx is going to be, just using the chain rule, thinking of this as x plus 2 to the power of negative 1, or you could use the quotient rule if you prefer we get negative 1 over x plus 2 squared, and this is just in the case where x is greater than or equal to 2. So then dy dx, you can see we've got negative something squared, so this is always going to be less than 0. So whenever x is greater than or equal to 2, it seems like we're not going to get any turning points because the derivative is always negative. So now let's look at what happens when x is less than or equal to 0. So this is our function. And we can differentiate this using the quotient rule. So if you have a fraction like this and you want to differentiate this, we can write this as the derivative of u times v minus u times the derivative of v all over v squared, where u is our numerator and v is our denominator. So then if we first of all differentiate the numerator, we just get negative 1. So we're going to have negative of x squared minus x plus 2 for our u prime times v and then we take away u times v prime. We're taking away some negatives, so I'm just going to write this as plus x plus 1 rather than minus the negative of this. And then when we differentiate the denominator, we get 2x minus 1. So then we can expand these brackets in a sec. And the denominator squared gives us x squared minus x plus 2 all squared. So then if we expand everything on the top, we get minus x squared plus x minus 2 plus we get 2x squared and here we've got a plus 2x and a minus x so just plus 1x and minus 1 over and we're just going to write this as dot 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 squared so the same thing in the denominator there 
And then you can see we've got 2x squared minus x squared gives us just 1x squared. We've got plus x plus another x, so plus 2x, and then minus 2 minus 1 gives us negative 3 over the same denominator again. And you can see now actually the numerator is going to factorise quite nicely. So we can factorise this as x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 1. You can expand this, we'd get the same numerator. And then the denominator, we'll just write again dot 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 squared. So here there's no factorization that will cancel here. But we can still work with this now because you can see that this is going to be equal to 0 exactly when, first of all, when x is negative 3 and secondly when x is positive 1. But remember we're in this case where x is less than or equal to 0. So actually x equals 1 isn't in this range of values of x we're using. So we can only have a turning point when x is negative 3. And we can actually go a bit further here as well because we can work out, for example, if x is to the left of negative 3, we can work out the sign of the derivative here. So to the left of negative 3, x plus 3 is going to be negative. So I'm going to write this the derivative very informally as a negative times this, x minus 1 when x is negative 3 or less is also going to be negative and then we're dividing by something squared. So you can see here we've got a negative times a negative divided by a square of something real. So this is going to be positive when x is less than negative 3. And then if x is going to be bigger than negative 3, and remember we're only actually going up to 0, because we're in this case where x is less than or equal to 0, then first of all x plus 3 is going to be positive. So we've now got, informally speaking, a positive times x minus 1 is still going to be negative, and the denominator is still just something squared, so that will be positive. So then you can see the derivative is going to be negative in this region between negative 3 and 0. So we've actually got the functions increasing up to negative 3 and then it's decreasing afterwards. You can see this is a maximum point then at x is negative 3. And now finally for x between 0 and 2, we've got a very similar function, the only difference being that we've got positive x rather than negative x in the numerator. So again, we could differentiate this using the quotient rule, and you can check if you're interested. We're going to get dy dx is now going to be negative x squared plus 2x plus 1 over the same denominator, all squared, so over x squared minus x plus 2, all squared. Now, there isn't a nice factorization for the numerator, but we can still see here that actually the derivative is always going to be positive in this region. And the nice way of seeing this is to factorize just these first two terms, so we take out a factor of x, we can write this as x times 2 minus x for these two terms, and we've still got the plus 1 over the same denominator, all squared. So now here, remembering that x is between 0 and 2, you can see that x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, but then also 2 minus x is also greater than or equal to 0. And then when we add 1 to this, we're going to get something which is always greater than or equal to 1, and we're dividing by the square of something real here. So this is actually always going to be strictly greater than 0 in this region between 0 and 2. So it seems if the derivative is always greater than 0, it seems like we're not going to get any more turning points in this region then. So it seems like the only turning point is that x is negative 3. But then something really interesting happens if we actually try and sketch this function now using what we know about its derivative. So if we start off on the left, for x less than or equal to 0, we had our function, you can see that as we go off to negative infinity or x goes up to positive infinity, we're going to have an asymptote at 0 just because x squared is going to grow much, much faster than the modulus of x there. So we're going to have an asymptote coming from 0 and the derivative's increasing all the way up until we get to negative 3. It's got a positive derivative. So then once we reach x is negative 3, we get this maximum, or this local maximum turning point. Then after there, our function decreases down all the way until x is 0, at which point it changes to a different function with different behaviour. So here, this point, we'll just label this is negative 3, and the y value is 1 seventh there. And then we go all the way down to here. When x is 0, we've got the point 0, and y is negative a half. And then from here, between 0 and 2, we know the derivative is positive, it increases. So this is going to increase up to, let's put this point around here, this is where x is 2, and here y would be a quarter. But then from x greater than or equal to 2, we saw that the derivative is 
negative, so it's going to decrease back down. And again, it will asymptote to zero as x goes to infinity, because the x squared term will dominate the modulus of x term there, and we'll get something which goes to zero as x goes to infinity. So we asymptote off like this. And now looking at this picture, it looks like we've actually got three turning points. So how did we miss both of these? Well, these two turning points, you can think of them as it is a turning point in the sense of the derivative is changing sign from it's decreasing here and then it's increasing afterwards, whereas here it's increasing up to that point and then it's decreasing afterwards. But it's not a turning point in the sense of a point where dy dx is equal to zero. So we need to think more carefully about what do we actually mean when we say we've got a turning point of a function. And should we even be asking this question about a function which isn't differentiable at all points? So we could argue then that we've actually got three turning points depending on your definition of a turning point. But we could also say that we've got a local maximum here, we've got a local minimum here, and we've got a local, which is also our global maximum, here where x is 2. So those are definitely, we can use that language even if we're not talking about a differentiable or a non-differentiable function. But then to use this language of a turning point, we need to think more carefully about what that actually means. So here, maybe I'd be a bit more comfortable using language, let's say, critical point, because I've seen that used before, talking about a function which isn't necessarily differentiable at a point. We could say it has a critical point there. But one way or another, we do have this local maximum, this local minimum, and this other local or global maximum point here. And we've definitely got one turning point when x is negative 3 there.